Hi, welcome to the rule of acquisition number 20, the poor efficiency tell. Poor efficiency indicates a poor understanding. And this has subparts A, B, C, and D. Science and engineering can produce wonderful bizwang marvels. But because we humans can only look back through history, every age of humanity believes itself to be the epitome of technical achievement. The computer age compares itself to the horse and buggy age. The Romans believed, hey, they were the pinnacle. But how can we gauge our place in terms of technical development? Now, we need this gauge because we basically need to know if we're done, if there's more to go. I mean, how do we know if we're done or not? How do we know that we've actually found all the secrets in any given field or technology? It'd be nice to know if we'd wait to gauge whether we're done or not. Because if we falsely think we're done, we're going to stop. In the early 1900s, there was a call to close the U.S. Patent Office because it was believed that everything that can be invented had been invented. They thought we were done. Now, this claim was falsely attributed to Charles Holland Dwell, or Duell, who was the United States Commissioner of Patent at the time. But he said something different. He said, in my opinion, all previous advances in the various lines of invention will appear totally insignificant when compared with those the present century will witness. What he means is the 20th century. This is, he said this at the beginning of the 20th century. I almost wish that I might live my life over that I may see the wonders which are we are at the threshold. So he was saying we should not assume we're done, but he's been falsely attributed by saying we are done. There was another commissioner of the patent office who said there is going to come a time when we're going to be done. The advancement in the art of the arts from year to year taxes our credulity and seems to presage the arrival of that period when human improvement must end. In other words, one day we're going to figure it all out. And there was a, actually a Futurama episode where Dr. Farnsworth basically figures it all out and it gets depressed because he's done. And Fry comes and says, well, you still have to figure out why the laws of physics are this way and not something else. And that gives the doctor hope that there's more to learn. So it's a really cool episode. But how can we gauge? I mean, if we could see into the future then would we get a clear picture of where we are? I mean, if we had a time machine, how would we know we're going far enough into the future to say humanity is done? I mean, humanity may blow itself up long before it's done, so a time machine is going to fail. We can do science fiction, you know, which is just basically an extrapolation of things we already know. I mean, I think Jules Verne was one of the most original thinkers. He thought of things nobody thought of, so that's cool. We might get a prodigy like that. We could compare ourselves to other advanced societies if we knew of any. But would we know that we're done or just below them? We wouldn't know what done is. Maybe when we get to their technology, we may assume falsely that we're done and there's no more to go. We wouldn't know where done is. And this is basically what I just said. So what I propose, I propose a tell that will give us an objective approximation of how primitive or advanced our, technology, our understanding in any given technology is. It's not a perfect tell. Nothing is perfect, but this will at least give us an objective idea if we're close to being done. Okay, again, there are many tells in the rules of acquisition that indicate we're not done. However, none really indicate how far we have to go. And I'm looking, for, this is going to be a tell that's going to give us an idea of how primitive we really are. It's going to tend to do that. We'll find out from its application over history whether it actually does do that. Okay, so the rule of acquisition of poor efficiency is a poor understanding. And let's look at some examples. The incandescent light bulb. Okay, a 40 watt light bulb produces 40 lumens of light for 40 watts of electricity use. Now the lumen is a measure of luminous power. Okay, but it's kind of spectrum related. But there's a quick approximation that everybody uses that if you have 500 lumens, you divide by 683 watts per lumen, you pretty much get 8.5. 878 watts of visible light. So the conversion is 683 watts per lumen. Okay, that's the approximate that everybody uses. So a 40 watt light bulb gives you less than a watt of visible light. And so our efficiency is 2.2%. So the efficiency of an old incandescent light bulb, 40 watt light bulb, is 2.2%. Very very inefficient. Matter of fact, you ever touch one of these, they get hotter than anything else. They probably produce a lot more heat energy than they do light energy. 
very, very inefficient technology. But the technology we used for more than, I'd say, 100 years. And so on a Wikipedia, if you look under luminous effic efficacy, efficacy, I don't know pronunciation, there is a table in there for lighting efficiency. And if you go down that table, you see the candle is 0.04% efficient, very, even more inefficient. And the candle's more primitive than the incandescent light bulb. The incandescent light bulb can range from 2 to 5%. And then the next state of evolution was the fluorescent light bulb, which gives us 8 to 16%. And the next evolution is the LED light bulbs. Now, we're currently at the state where, on a one for one comparison, the LEDs are just a little bit more efficient than the fluorescent. But the theoretical limit that we have for LEDs is 38 to 44% efficiency. And I'm going to show you that this is in the range of saying, hey, we pretty much can go, that's pretty much as far as we're going to be able to go. Let's look at another example. Power transformers. Power transformers are upwards of 90% efficient. The basic design hasn't changed in over 100 years, other than improvements in materials and reliability and you know, lifespan and uh, lightning protection, yada, yada, yada. And although new electromagnetism proposes a different theory on how they work, the answers obtained by classical theory are good enough. In other words, we showed you before that when you constrain new induction and classical theory to closed loop inductors, mutual induction, that's what these are, you get identical answers, identical answers. Constraining them to the point where they are identical answers. And therefore, when you get to a certain level of efficiency, we're going to show you this, changing to an improved theory isn't going to improve the technology. The technology is the application of a theory. You can have wrong theories give you good answers. Nuclear power plants. Well, fission is power plants are 2% efficient. You know, we, we know that certain materials are radioactively decay, but we don't know why. We're you know, primitive today as we were when we had fire. We thought fire was an element. We didn't know how fire worked, but that didn't stop us from making good use out of it. And we're doing the same thing. We know that radioactive materials uh, decay, and we've measured their rate, and we've measured all their pro We don't know why they decay, but that doesn't stop us from generating energy. But because we're only getting 2% efficiency, it shows we're very primitive in our understanding of nuclear and quantum mechanics. Our quantum mechanics hasn't had done anything to improve this. So it says to me, well, quantum mechanics is a fraud. Okay, fusion reactors, we can't get to work. We believe the sun is a fusion. I don't believe this. I believe there is fusion going on in the sun, but the sun's energy is mostly fission. And some people say, well, we have hydrogen bombs. That proves we know how fusion works. I'm sorry, a hydrogen bomb is, uses radioactive hydrogen to make a fission bomb more efficient. It is not a bomb produced where the energy is not produced by fusion, it's produced by fission. There's plutonium in a hydrogen bomb, and that's where you get the energy effect. The deuterium they put in there is just to amplify the effect of the plutonium. Okay, It is just a more efficient hydrogen, uh, atom, uh, fission bomb. Jet engines. This is a chart I scarfed from the MIT website, and they're showing the efficiency of current uh, the Whittle engine, which is the original up to the advanced UDF engines. Um, the top line here is efficiency. This is the 50% efficiency line right here. And you can see we're driving toward higher efficiency. And even the best engine we, that we're currently theorizing, I guess, I don't know how old this is, is only going to be about 48% efficient. And they think future trends are going to get them above the 50% efficiency line. I don't think so, and I'm going to show you why. Rocket engines, the same thing. This is the old Saturn V. I don't have a chart for their efficiency. I'm just going to show you an interesting way to view how efficient we are. This is the old Saturn V, and you can see the Saturn V has lots of dark stuff. It's, it's not even translucent. It's just globs of garbage coming out. That's because this thing is emitting mostly unburned fuel. Okay, that's why it was a very inefficient engine. The new space shuttle engines, you can actually see details up into the cones which means this is pure plasma. That means the fuel is almost perfectly being burned. There's no very little light coming off of it compared to this or this. Okay, so most of that energy is being turned into, as much as possible is being turned into usable thrust. Okay, not all the fire and brimstone of the solid fuel boosters here or the old Saturn V. 
Okay, now if we look at rocket engines, we did this in Rule of Acquisition 18. I'm not going to go over this again. If you want to go over this again, go back to Rule of Acquisition 18. But we determined that the spring, when you have these two balls, one represents the spaceship, one represents the fuel being jettisoned out the back, and the spring is the energy in the fuel. That's the representation of that. Then when you let the spring fire, that spring is going to add two joules of energy to the system. One joule to the mass of the fuel being ejected and one joule to the spaceship being propelled forward. The total energy that was in the fuel was two joule, but only one joule goes to the starship. So at the best propulsion system, rocket propulsion system using the old chemical system, according to this simplified model, the best you're going to get is 50% efficiency. Best. Absolute best. That assumes that there's no it loss in the spring and yada yada yada, no viscosity, whatever. So any propulsion system, best you're going to get 50%. In engineering, electrical engineering, we have the maximum power transfer theory. I'm not going to go into it, but they say pretty much any power source has an internal resistance, and you're going to get the best energy out of this power source if you match the internal resistance. Or it could be the resistance of the transmission line. It doesn't matter. And so you, the best you can do is get 50% of the power out. The best you can hope for. So, we're going to talk about the 40% rule. Because many well-known technologies have a 50% theoretical upper limit to what the efficiencies you can obtain out of them, it's safe to assume 50% as a theoretical for maximum for energies we don't know yet. Yeah, granted, some of these technologies, when they come into their own, they may be upwards of 90%, whatever, whatever, but they will not be, their theoretical limit cannot be below 50%. We're seeing in the little study I've done that 50% is a good minimum for a theoretical maximum. I hope, I hope that sounds confusing, I know. And so if we use 50% as a theoretical maximum, we choose 40%, which is 80% of 50, as a practical minimum efficiency for any technology. In other words, if we can beat 40%, we're doing good as far as our understanding of that technology. And so rule of acquisition 20A, 40% efficiency is the minimum acceptable efficiency for any given technology. Now this has three ambiguous meanings. One, the first meaning is we should not accept or use technologies that achieve less than 40% efficiency unless that's all we have. Two, it's not acceptable to apply the poor efficiency tell to technologies exceeding 40%. In other words, if we meet 40%, we can't use a poor efficiency tell to tell us we have more to go and we may not have more to go. We may actually be done. Okay, and number three, it is expected that all technologies will improve to attain efficiencies of 40% or better. Now, the second is what I really intended for this rule of acquisition 20A, but, you know, I think the others are reliable, and we're going to claim them unless shown to be unreasonable at a later point in time. I do believe that 40% or better is what we should achieve in our technologies. And that, and if we're not there, it means we probably have a ways to go unless we, you know, we can find a technology out there, someone can show me a technology where the theoretical maximum is less than 50%, then we'll adjust our 40% number. But right now, the minimum theoretical maximum for anything I could find is 50%. And if we take 80% of that, I think that's a good lower limit to where we should shoot for, strive for in our technologies. And so we can pretty much gauge the ages of technology based on efficiency, on efficiency. So if we're getting below 2.5% efficiency, we're basically at the caveman age. We have no clue how it works. Okay, this, I'm telling you right now, we really don't know what causes radioactive materials to decay. Just the same as we did not know what caused a candle to burn back in the old days. And once we finally were able to understand the chemistry of fire, we were able to improve things drastically. And 10% is the alchemy age. This is the age where we're starting to develop models. However, most likely the existing models are still wrong. This is minus, less than 10% is 2.5 to 10%. It's in the range between here and here. Between 10 and 40%, this is a wide area, we are transitioning from wrong models to at least useful models. They still may be wrong models, but at least they're useful models. And this should be a really fast-moving age, because as we start developing more models, those models will tell us where we should go look to disambiguate, and it should happen really fast. When we get to above 40%, we should consider we're probably in the final age. And this trying to say, well, is there a different model? Is there a better way to go? We're probably not going to find anything. Okay, and, and at this stage, even if the existing model is proven wrong, which I showed with new, the new induction as opposed to Faraday's law, 
you know, we're above 40% efficient. It, it, applying new induction to, to uh, transformers isn't going to materially affect how we create, apply the technology of transformers. And we should assume right now that 50% is a fair theoretical upper limit for technologies we don't know yet. Uh, but we, sh you know, but we should not be surprised if some new technologies top out at better, you know. So rule of acquisition 20B, technologies that are less than 10% efficient are likely the result of bad theory. Rule of acquisition 20C, technologies that are better than 40% efficient are not likely to benefit from improved theories. Probably we're done with those technologies. It doesn't mean we're done with the theory. It just means that the technology, the application of theory, is pretty much done. Okay, be, let me be clear. We're done with the technology. It doesn't mean we're done with the theory. So wrap up of the poor efficiency. Tell rule of action 20. Poor efficiency indicates poor understanding. 20A, 40% efficiency is the minimum acceptable efficiency for any given technology. 20B, technologies that are less than 10% efficient are likely the result of bad theory. 20C, technologies that are better than 40% efficient are not likely to benefit from improved theory. Thank you very much. I hope that was informative. I hope it changes your opinion of looking at the world and where we are. And by the way, solar panels are in the ballpark of 20% efficiency. So that means there's room to go on those as well. Anyway, take care.